In this video, we're going to look at how to fix some clipper errors. This series is sponsored by PCBWay. This video is part of a series where we set up clipper control on a 3D printer. In previous videos, we set up our clipper device, flashed firmware to our 3D printer and connected our clipper device to our 3D printer. I'll assume therefore that you've already done the same. And if you haven't, go back and check out those earlier videos in the series, because there's a good chance I'll have answered any questions you might have. So once you first get your clipper device talking to your printer, it's not unusual to have an error or two. Don't worry though, clipper errors are usually pretty well explained and quite easy to fix. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a couple of the common ones that you might see when you first install Clipper, which should give you an idea how to tackle any other ones you might see too. Obviously, I can't cover every single potential error that you might find with Clipper, and if there's something you're particularly stuck with, drop the error message down in a comment, and either myself or maybe some of my viewers might be able to help you with it. First, we're going to look at one of the most common Clipper errors you're likely to see. Before we do that, just a very quick message from our series sponsor, PCBWay. In earlier videos in the series, I've already shown you some of the diverse and maybe unexpected services that PCBWay offer. Another service that you wouldn't necessarily expect from a PCB manufacturer is sheet metal fabrication. That's right, PCBWay now offer a full sheet metal fabrication service, including folding and welding, which is perfect for things like enclosures. Not only can they now fabricate all of these parts for you, but they can also complete any surface finishing too. PCBWay can bead blast, anodize, spray paint, powder coat, and even chrome plate. So for whatever you need making, try PCBWay. Now back to those clipper errors. By far the most common clipper error that I've seen is MCU unable to connect. In this particular case, MCU stands for microcontroller unit rather than Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you get the MCU unable to connect error, then it means that your clipper device is unable to communicate with the microcontroller on your 3D printer's control board. There can be a number of different reasons for this. The first thing to check is that your 3D printer is actually turned on and that you're using the correct cable to connect the two devices. If you're using the most common method of connection, which is USB, check that your USB cable is one meant for data transfer and not just one for charging phones. Unfortunately, different types do exist and there's no way to tell which one you have just by looking at them. If you're sure that you have the right cable, then the next thing to check is that you've plugged your USB cable into the correct port on your Clipper device. If you've been following along with my Clipper series, then you already would have told your device which port it needs to use to talk to your 3D printer. If you've since plugged your USB cable into a different port on your Clipper device, then you either need to plug it back into the original one or go and find the MCU ID for the port it's now plugged into and enter this into the printer config file as I showed you in the MCU ID video. Once you've ruled out all of these possibilities, then the most likely cause for the error is that your 3D printer has the wrong firmware flashed to it. If you haven't flashed firmware to your 3D printer yet, then you need to compile and flash Clipper specific firmware to your 3D printer's control board so that your Clipper device can control it. If you have already flashed your firmware with Clipper firmware, then you need to check and double check that you use the correct settings when you compile the firmware with your Clipper device. If you're in any doubt, then run through those previous videos again, just to make sure you haven't missed any details. Hopefully one of these solutions will fix the MCU unable to connect error for you. Another common error or another variation of it is when one of your Clipper config files has a line of code that it can't make sense of. For instance, when I uploaded my Ender 3 S1 Pro's config file, I had this error. I had include file and then an address of a file, and it says it does not exist. What this error is telling me is that there's a line of code in my printer configuration file that's telling Clipper to look for a time-lapse configuration file, which doesn't exist. If I look in my printer.cfg file, I can see that there's a line that simply says include timelapse.cfg. If I look back at my config files, I can see that there is no time-lapse config file. So to fix this error, there are a couple of things I could do. I could create a time-lapse configuration file, which at this stage I don't want to do. I could just delete that line of code, or as one of my viewers rightly pointed out, the better way to handle it would be to type a hash symbol at the beginning of the line. In Python coding, which is what Clipper uses, the hash symbol at the beginning of the line means that it is to be ignored. 
The good thing about doing this is if you get any unexpected results from effectively removing that line of code, then you can just delete the hash at the beginning and reinstate it. Once I've commented out the line, saved and restarted, my error disappears. As I say, these are just two examples of errors that you might have, but I hope it's given you a better understanding of how we tackle fixing them. Don't forget that if you have an error that you just can't solve with Clipper, then drop it into a comment below and hopefully someone might be able to help you with it. If there are any errors that aren't easy to explain with a simple comment reply, then I may consider making another video to explain how to fix your Clipper error. And don't forget, sometimes the easiest way of finding out how to fix these errors is just to Google it. This is usually the first thing I do if I get an error that I don't understand. There are a lot of people using Clipper firmware now, and it's very rare to find an error that somebody hasn't already solved. Once you've solved your Clipper errors, click here to go to the next video where I show you how to run through a few checks to make sure everything's working properly on your 3D printer before you start your first print. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.